they're not moving. RV camps grow in Northeast Portland. So in Portland, as well as here in, in Western Washington, a lot of the homeless encampments and RV encampments along the right of ways, along the freeway systems and heavily traveled arterials, those have been cleared out. But then what's happening is that standard whack-a-mole program that we talk about. You clear one from here, they pop up over here. So that's what we've got going on here. Let's, let's run through this and let's see what we got going. Is this anything different? Well, what it has to do with is you're recognizing one encampment after another, after another. And what is the end result? Now, Portland residents are saying, we're, we're, we're a scooch away from pulling the eject button and we're out of here. Let's see what they have to say. Uh, the RV encampments along Sandy Boulevard. I've, I've heard of Sandy Boulevard so many times. I'm going to get down to Portland. I'm going to go to Sandy Boulevard. Have drawn complaints from residents to the Portland Street Services Coordination Center. Dozens of RVs and cars along that stretch in Northeast Portland spill into the neighborhoods near the thoroughfare. You have them oftentimes set up on these busy streets because that's where they do. They're kind of allowed to be there. And then it infiltrates into the residential neighborhoods. But places for people who live in the RVs are extremely limited. You know why that is? It's because when you put a whole bunch of people that live in RVs onto a lot, like we've had happen here in Seattle, like has happened in Portland in the past, you know what? Those don't pan out. So why is that? Well, because when you put a whole bunch of people in RVs into a lot, oftentimes it becomes unlawful, dangerous. People don't want to stay there. We have, we have checked this out many, many times as far as, hey, let's just build a lot for them. It'll be fine. Well, they don't want to stay there. And those lots eventually get shut down. But we have this really short-term memory. We don't seem to be able to remember that that was the case. And so then we're like, well, let's build them a lot and they can go all live there. All right. Until they don't. And that's why they're in these residential areas because for them, you know, they're spread out a little bit more, not quite so concentrated. It's probably a little bit safer. It's just not safer for the residents because like we're about to hear, yeah, you still got the shenanigans going on just in lev lesser levels than if you put, you know, two dozen of them together in a really tight spot not going to work out. So what's the solution? Man, yeah, you got to figure something out because you can't have these encampments in a residential area, right? I mean, it's just not fair that the citizens that are paying money, tax hard taxpayer money, and you've got these people just doing willy nilly whatever they want. Tough, tough scenario, right? But places for people who live in RVs are extremely limited. They're basically not non existent, right? Neighbor Dolores Livesay told Coin6 News and one encampment is now where a school bus picks up and drops off students. That's pretty standard, right? Pretty standard. If we're worried about them walking to school, well, they're getting off a school bus and those things are there. Yeah, no parent wants their, chid, their kid to have to experience that. I, I talk about and did a podcast on what's going on in San Francisco. You got kids getting off a school bus and you've got an open air drug market right there right front and center. So these Portland neighbors, you know, it's all relative to what you're used to experiencing. And this is not good either. But it's not nearly as bad as what you've got going on in the Tenderloin, or some of the other really decrepit neighborhoods in San Francisco, where things have gotten to, you know, next level debauchery, because you've just got people shooting up, people doing drugs, prostitution, you name it, stolen goods in those areas. And you've got some of that going on here too with the, the RV encampments, but it's not nearly as bad. But these residents are basically saying, yeah, we don't want that here. Shortly after she noticed a camp growing near I-84 and 122nd, the camp was cleared because that was basically on a freeway, Interstate 84. But she wonders why it seems like there's no plan for people living in their cars. So the homeless encampment was along I-84 and 122nd, tents. But you've got cars and the cars and the vehicles, that's a different drill. And yet I oftentimes look at, you know, the ground on which those cars sit. You've got a real hazardous waste situation. You've got oil, you've got 
coolant, you've got AC refrigerant, you name it. On RVs, you've got, you know, holding tanks of sewage. You've got all kinds of stuff going on and it's just happening right on the sidewalk or right on the street. And you've got cars that in RVs that aren't being moved forever and they just sit there. And you've got this environmental issue, let alone all the other stuff that goes along with it, right? So they're just not moving. It's not working, Libsay said. I don't know what he has to do. Go to another city and see what works because what you're doing is not working because they're just moving from one area to another. That's how this goes, right? Till you set them up with a permanent spot. And even then, when you do that, a lot of these folks are going to say, no, no. It's just like the city run shelters, the county run shelters, you know? Yeah, no, don't really want that shelter. I'll pass. Too dangerous. You got too many nut jobs on drugs in those encampments in in the sanctioned shelters. I don't want to be involved in that. Same thing with the RVs. People eventually go, oh, it's too dangerous. You got too many nut jobs in there. I'm not going there. You know, it's it's just this crazy, endless scenario. She said she has seen people poking around mailboxes and cars in the area. As you do, that's what's going to happen. Crime levels are going to escalate. Somebody is looking in the cars. I've had a few people go through my recycling, Lindsay said, Lipsy said. A neighbor sent her a picture. I think that's the next door neighbor's yard of a guy with a gun, like in the middle of the night. Ah, That's standard, right? I mean, that's standard. And it's terrible. And when I say it's standard, I say that facetiously, right? Like that is not standard. You shouldn't have that going on. And you're you're going to, if you've got RV encampments within your neighborhood, that's just what you're going to get. Everybody knows it. That's why in Portland, they're trying to, um, or no, in Tacoma, it is. They're trying to outlaw homeless encampments within uh, 10 blocks of city sanctioned shelters. So they recognize, okay, here are all the bad things that happen with homeless encampments. And they're literally saying, we don't want them within 10 blocks of our city run shelters. We don't want that situation because of all the crime and all the escalated stuff that comes inherently with these folks living in tents that close to a shelter. So these folks that are living close to shelters, they want all the services, they want all the benefits but they don't want to have to live with the restrictions of actually being in the shelter. Wild stuff, wild stuff to, to, to have a city like Tacoma have to get to the point where like, yeah, we need to ban you all from 10 blocks from. So then they're pushing folks out. And so you're literally just moving people around yet again, not a permanent solution of, Hey, you know what? We need to get you into treatment. Hey, you know what? We need to get you into a institution, a mental institution. We need to work on whatever it is that you've got going on. That's kind of underlying causes of your homelessness. We're not doing that. We're just kind of shoving people around, but removing the RV camp takes towing and coordination with the Portland Bureau of Transportation. All right. So it does. Conversations have gone on for years about people living in their RVs or cars where they can go. The most comprehensive answer to Coin6 News came from Commissioner Dan Ryan's office. Well, what did Dan Ryan have to say? His office points to plans for one RV village, Sunderland Village, which is part of the Safe Rest Village program. The goal is to open 55 spaces there for vehicles. You could go to like one of these encampments, these RV encampments, and you probably got half of that, if not, you know, three quarters of that already just right there in one encampment. So 55 spaces. How many do you have? How many thousands of people living in RVs do you have in Portland? Thousands, thousands. Sunderland won't be able to meet the need on its own. So clearly, because you get 55 spaces. So we're working to develop additional locations outside the SRV, the Sunderland Village model. That's from Dennis Theralt, the Multnomah County and the Joint Office of Homeless Services said in a response to COIN6. Metro also pointing to ongoing conversations at the Expo Center that have not been finalized at this time. There are some spots for vehicles at the Multnomah Village, but no standalite site is operational yet. Liv says she can only take so much. Here's the thing. Unless something dramatic happens and we get better leadership, she said, we're gone. 
And that's what I really kind of wanted to point at here is these citizens are like at a point, they're not there yet. They're not moving out in droves yet. I've done the podcasts on, okay, so how many people have actually moved? And what does that look like when they are living literally next door to the encampments? What does, what does the housing prices, what do those areas look like? How have those been impacted? Well, you know, I went through all the data. Those folks, this, this, this woman here, unless something dramatic happens, we get some better leadership, we're gone. They're not gone yet. But they're about this close away from probably moving in some significant numbers. Because you can only take this for so long. And then you realize, oh, yeah, this situation isn't going to get better anytime soon. And that's where I think a lot of these folks are at right now. And so they're, they're at that. All right, we're at our wits end. Well, you're not because you haven't moved yet. But I think that is going to happen very shortly here because you got a lot of stuff going on in Portland. You got a lot of just, ooh, yeah, news stories that you're like, okay, yeah, that is not a tenable long term situation. Something's going to pop. Something's going to burst. Residents are going to start moving out in droves. I think that happens. Or you have more residents saying, you know what? We used to be supportive of people just living willy nilly because we were told that was what being compassionate was. But now we recognize that letting these people live willy nilly wherever isn't compassion. It's actually just enabling their situation to continue, which is they shouldn't be living in a tent. They shouldn't be living in an RV in the condition that they're in, which is either on a bunch of drugs, mental issues, or a combination of both. Because the folks that are homeless that are looking to try and make their situation better, oftentimes you will find them taking respite in the city sanctioned shelters, trying to figure out a way to kind of get back up and running, kind of doing that instead of living on, you know, willy nilly wherever on the outskirts being pushed around, because they don't want to live with rules in a city run shelter. That's kind of the bottom line. That's the way I see it anyway. That is my opinion. So until these residents of not only San Francisco and Seattle and Portland start to make some really hard stands, you know, I don't think you're going to see your politicians really doing much because it's going to take such a humongous effort to clear these out. And then where do you put them? Where do you take them to? You've got thousands of RVs throughout throughout Portland. I was down at a, a show down at Tacoma Dome. I was at Roger Waters of Pink Floyd. He's got this big multimedia show. And so we were we were getting down to to uh, Tacoma and just outside of the Tacoma Dome, there's a couple of streets that are just, you know, loaded up with homeless, you know, people living in RVs. Just it was kind of a, you know, quasi industrial area. And I had not driven on that road, I don't think ever, because we're kind of coming on the backside of, of the Tacoma Dome. But my friend and I were like, geez, where are we? We are in a third world country here. It's literally just people living willy nilly, crazy stuff. You could just feel crazy stuff was going on. And it was kind of this lawless area. I really wanted to shoot some footage so I could share it with you. But we're going to do that down in Portland, and I'll probably go down to Tacoma. But you've all seen the footage. You've seen the the poverty porn. And that's what these neighbors are going, yeah, we're out of here pretty soon unless leadership changes. Leadership, even if it does change, going to have a hard time dealing with all this because the cat is out of the bag. These folks have lived in these areas for so long. They know they're just going to get pushed around. They know they can just go right back to put in their RV or their car wherever, and, you know, without any steep consequences, a city like Portland doesn't have consequences for anything. That's why I think you've got normal people saying, hey, let's get some changes going on. We're gone. And that is what's going on. Not quite there yet, but I think, you know, 2023, you're going to see some pretty major th changes happen as far as, you know, e either things getting cleaned up, which doesn't seem real likely. Or people reacting, and that means selling their homes, closing down their businesses, all of that that goes with, hey, leadership not doing what they're supposed to do, which is not having people live just willy-nilly and all that that brings. 
All right, that's it for me on this one. Thank you so much for being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.